the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today is the third Sunday of Easter, and we remember the road to Emmaus. On that road we will meet a couple, part of the wider circle of Jesus' followers. Baffled and bewildered, they leave the others behind in Jerusalem. May we, with them, journey through pain and confusion to meet with the resurrected Christ. And so we begin that journey by singing Alleluia, Jesus is risen. Jesus' early followers took the road from Jerusalem to Emmaus. With them, we walk away from our crucified Saviour, unable to comprehend his risen life. Therefore, let us confess our sins with a sincere and true heart. Sometimes we walk away from the difficult things in our life, afraid to face the reality of our fears and sadness. Yet you overcame death and rejection, and offer transformation and new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Sometimes we are so busy with our own concerns that we fail to notice the needs of others. We walk on, so focused on our questions, that we do not create the space to notice you already at work, beckoning us to join you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Sometimes we think we know how God should behave. Forgive our religious pride, our stubborn assumptions, and meet us in the mystery of your death and resurrection. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. The God of love forgives you journeys with you and invites you to new life. May you open your heart to receive grace upon grace, unburdened by guilt and shame, and free to live and love again. In Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, 
and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him, and he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place here in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucify him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you o, o Christ. Christ. In our Gospel reading today, we're with a couple, but they're out walking, so come with me. But this couple were not just walking, they were walking away, away from Jerusalem, from the scene of their tragedy and confusion, the scene of their failed saviour. And as they walked, they met a stranger. Now Luke tells us that this was Jesus, but to them, he was just a stranger. Just as a side note, Jesus causes them to learn and grow, gradually, mysteriously, and weirdly, even. Certainly not as they would have wanted to. There are things that they learnt from his hiddenness that they could never learn if he was suddenly, instantly before them, resurrected. And there are things that we can learn in this strange season too, that we would never learn in normal times. And so, what are you learning about yourself, about your neighbours, about God? Who do you feel more compassion for now than you ever would have otherwise? Don't miss these lessons. Don't let this wisdom slip, but store it up in your heart. Anyway, back on the road, and this couple are still talking with their stranger. And they're sharing their sadness and their disappointment at Jesus, not meeting their expectations. They wanted him to redeem Israel from the spiritual and political slavery of the Roman occupation. But this very system killed him. And their own religious leaders handed him over. But Jesus says, don't be foolish. Are you still so slow? 
It wasn't it necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? He shows them that they crucified him, but we hoped he would redeem Israel becomes. They crucified him, and that was how he redeemed Israel. God doesn't save us from suffering, but through suffering. Don't miss out on the wisdom of this time, even if it feels like suffering, even if it feels like breaking. As these three wandering travellers walk and talk and have much discussion, Jesus interprets the scriptures for them. He shows them how God always works through hardship, how the healer was always going to be known in hurt and in sacrifice. And as they approach the end of the day, the couple persuade Jesus to stay for dinner. And gathered around a table, Jesus, as yet unrecognised, takes bread, he blesses it, and he breaks it. And their eyes were wide with wonder and understanding. How did they recognise him from the breaking of the bread? Did they see the scars in his wrists? Did they understand, did the penny drop about the blessedness of being broken? Did they recognise his familiar style from the feeding of the 5,000 and the stories they had heard of the Last Supper? I don't know, but they knew. And so they took off, back down the road. They just had to share the news. And this news, not just that Jesus was indeed risen, but that he'd been made known in the breaking of the bread. Now, we can't break bread together as we normally would, but Jesus is with us, and he's among us as we go about our normal everyday tasks, our walking and talking, our sitting down to eat. If you can find the flour in your baking, in your making, even in the brokenness of things. And so may our eyes be opened. May we not run away from our confusion and disappointment, our misunderstanding of God, but find the divine in and through the things of this world and the things of this strange season. Let us pray. Risen Lord, we need your presence on this road we are travelling, a road between fear and hope, a road between isolation and the world. We pray that like the disciples walking along the road to Emmaus, we will know your presence with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Risen Lord, light of the world, we seek your wisdom in the midst of the questions we have about the circumstances we find ourselves in. Open our eyes, Lord, to your work of transformation in and around us. As we walk with you day by day, help us to understand the power of our words to hurt or to heal. Give us the graciousness to make all our conversations holy. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Risen Lord, we thank you for making yourself known to us in the breaking of the bread. We pray, Lord, that you will make yourself known to all those who need comfort, to those who need places of safety, and to those who need healing. We thank you that you travel with us in our joys and our concerns. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
May the God of peace, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.